All right, good morning. So here we are. It is is today the seventh, Tuesday the seventh, and so um, today we are in Psalm twenty-two, verses nine through eighteen, and um, you may hear Amber in the background. She is crazy, and she records our nights. And then listens to them every morning because she thinks it's funny. So all the things that go on in the middle of the night she records and then listens to. And she is listening to it in the background right now. So hopefully it's not a distraction. So we will see. So today, today's a very interesting psalm. Or the, the, the verses that we're going to read are very interesting. Um, if we remember from yesterday, David is, is crying out from his sufferings. And it's also a psalm that Jesus quotes from the cross. But today, it gets really interesting. And so let me just jump in and we will make a couple observations. So it says this, verse 9 of Psalm 22. It says, Yet you brought me out of the womb. You made me trust in you even at my mother's breast. From birth I was cast on you. From my mother's womb you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls surround me, strong bulls from Bashan encircle me. Roaring lions that tear their prey open their mouths wide against me. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax, it has melted within me. My mouth is dried up like a pot sherd, whatever that is, and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of death, and dogs surround me. A pack of villains encircle me. They pierce my hands and my feet, and all my bones are on display. People stare and they gloat over me. They divide my clothes among me, among them, and cast lots for my garments. And so, in this passage, David is describing an experience that, that if you look at his life, is not his own experience here. It's really, really interesting. He describes he from the from first from the first person. He's describing a, almost an execution that's taking place. Now, what's interesting about this is that in the Gospels, we are given four perspectives, four external perspectives um, of the cross and of G- Jesus's. Um, crucifixion. We know that in the crucifixion of Christ, that that the that your shoulders would be dislocated as they would be nailed to the cross. We know that Jesus from the cross was thirsty and he cried out for for water, for a drink. We know that on the at the cross, um, that the soldiers surrounding him, that people would stare and would would mock him. They said they would say to things to him, "Why doesn't God rescue him?" We know that that at the cross that Jesus' garment, his his undergarment was was one piece and that they were going to tear it and divide it, but instead of tearing it they 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 cast lots in the sense to see who would take it home. And this is exactly the scene that David's describing a couple thousand years before. Or probably a thousand years before. And it's, it's terribly interesting. Let me just read through it again. Starting in verse starting in verse 13, it says, the roar, Roaring lions, they tear their prey, and they open their mouths wide against me. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax. It is melted within me. My mouth is dried up. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth and lay me in the dust of death. Dogs surround me. A pack of villains encircle me. They pierce my hands and my feet. And all my bones are on display. People stare and gloat over me and they divide my clothes among them and they cast lots for my garment. It's it's as if, and, I don't, and it's not as if, it's, it, it's David has been given prophetically somehow perhaps in prayer or in worship Jesus's perspective 
of the cross, of the, of the crucifixion. You and I, within the scriptures, have the external perspective of the witnesses who saw Jesus be crucified. And yet, through this psalm, we have Jesus' perspective and what he experienced on the cross. And I, I don't know about you, but that's just... It's just unbelievable. It's just amazing. And, and and so you and I are given an inside look of what Jesus faced. A, 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 the Son of God who was always in perfect union with his Father, being separated from him. A, the Son of God who who took the sins of the world upon himself and faced the agony and death that we should have faced. And it leaves me almost without words. Like how do you, how do you even how do you even think through that? And the only thing that that really jumped out at me from thinking about that this morning was a passage from Hebrews the writer of Hebrews, which is perhaps Paul in verse in chapter 12, he says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and set down at the right hand of the throne of God. See, when, when, we read this, when we read this psalm, we're given the perspective of Jesus, and we are given an inside look on the agony that he had to face. And I don't know about you, but for me, it just raises the question, like, why would he do that? Why would he go through that? Paul says in Hebrews, the reason that he did that was because of the joy that was set before him. And that joy that was set before him was you and was me, and was his church, his people. He endured the cross because of the prize that was set before him, the people that he was saving. And so I don't, I don't even know really what to say to that other than just there's this sense of just setting in that wonder and awe and appreciation for what Jesus did for us. And so today is Tuesday. It's take time Tuesday. Take time to connect with God. Take time perhaps to connect with someone else. And I know that for myself, the thing that I'm going to do today is I'm going to take time simply just to to think about this psalm, to think about Jesus's perspective to think about what he went through for me, what he went through for us, and simply live in a place of gratitude and thankfulness for that. And so, hopefully that makes sense. I, I know reading it this morning was just it just blew me away. And so, I hope you guys have a great day. Hopefully I didn't take too long doing this. And um, just think about that. Think about what Jesus did for us and take time today to 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 appreciate that and take time today perhaps to share that, that love, the love that Jesus had that he gave to us, perhaps take time simply to share that with someone else in your life. So blessings to you guys. Hope you have a great day. We will see you tomorrow. Love you. Bye.